Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. On the last live stream that I did um, on the Laser Makers Realm, I did a clock for my wife for Valentine's Day. This is it right here. And I think it came out really nice. Oh, this part in the back moved a little bit. <laughs> but um, this clock, I said on the live stream, that I would be demonstrating how I did this in Lightburn. Quick and easy, nice little Valentine's Day present. And it is two layers for the clock, and then the names on top is like a third layer. And um, I had a friend of mine came over between the last live stream and now, and he fell in love with the clock. So I figured this would be the perfect way to demonstrate and show you how I did it. So uh, today I'm going to be doing a clock for Jose and uh, Irma and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it fast, easy, and it's a really nice uh, Valentine's Day present for the wife or the husband. So uh, let's get started right away. Well, let's jump over into Lightburn and uh, I'll show you how I did this. All right, so this is the file that you're going to be getting in the download, and I will create uh, three different files with different origins so that you can pick the right one for your machine. And um, the text on here, I happen to really like this font. It's called Great Vibes. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video, as well as in the show notes section. And I do have some notes already. I'm not finished with it yet. But um, there are some notes in here that you can uh, take a look at. And uh, like I said, I haven't finished with the notes yet, but I will. I'll put the link in that description as well. All you have to do is click on File, and then over here, Show Notes. So anyway, let me show you how I did this. I started with my Valentine earrings, and I just picked anyone to get the heart shape I'm going to show you in a second how to do this in note edit now these earrings are a little different than um, what I originally planned to do and I'll tell you why and this is just going to be a little tip on note editing I actually drew all of these earrings in this library over here um, in Corel Zara several years ago before Lightburn was around. So when you draw something like this in uh, any type of other program, you wind up with hundreds of extra nodes that you don't want. And let me show you, I'm gonna switch over to node edit right here. And let me show you what I'm talking about. There are, <laughs> there are literally, and I use that word sparingly, hundreds and hundreds of nodes in, in this and really all that is is erroneous information that Lightburn is going to send to the laser it's going to increase the file size so what I did was um, I was going to use this heart shape but I decided not to uh, what I decided to do was to get my pencil tool over here on the left instead and draw my own lines based on this heart and if I draw my own lines well then I don't have to worry about all of those extra nodes. So you see how that turned into a bullseye? I'm gonna start right there. And if I go close enough to the next line, it will actually curve with the drawing. So all I'm doing is following the line and clicking. And I just wanted to show you this because you can take any shape that you want. And as long as you don't go too far, it will actually follow the curvature of that particular item. So let me show you. So there you go. See that? It followed the curvature. And now if I go to node edit, you'll see the difference. There are only a few nodes here as compared to hundreds of nodes. So um, I just wanted to show that to you. That's one way that you can do it. You can take any heart and trace it. And I usually only do half and then uh, I'll duplicate that and flip it and um, that will do the job. Today uh, I'm going to be providing this file so 
Uh, today I'm going to just take this part here and I'm going to show you how I did the clock. So let's ungroup this and grab just this part right here, which is the heart. And this is the heart shape I'm going to be using. Now, if you decide that you're not happy with a 11.7 inch wide by 10 inch high heart, if you want to make it smaller or if you want to make it larger, what you have to remember is before you do all of this, you have to get both of these hearts together like that. And you have to scale these together. You have to select both of these and you have to scale them proportionately so that they both scale up or down uh, at, at the exact same size. So we're going to undo all of that. Now we have our heart and this is going to work on this toolpath over here which is a 12 inch by 12 inch toolpath. That's where I want to work in today and I'm going to show you how I created all of this. So now you can get any heart off the internet. There are lots of them available or you can trace one like I said and like I said only trace half of it and then you can duplicate it, mirror it and join the nodes and it's just that simple but this is the important part over here the actual clock face so uh, let's start by drawing out our circle and we want the circle to be most of the size of the heart like that so we're going to take the primitive circle tool over here I'm going to start on the left here and drag to the right and select it let me uh, take this out of fill mode for right now. And I'm just going to hold down shift and drag over the heart and bullseye them like that. And now I can get an idea. Is that the size that I want? And it's not. So I want the perfect circle. I want it to fit inside of here. I want a little extra room over there. So let's scale it down. I'm going to hold control. I'm just going to scale it down just a little bit like that and that gives us uh, let's take a look and see 7.3 inches that should be pretty close to what uh, this one is over here 7.7 .7, yeah so it's almost almost the same you just want to have a little bit of space at the top and a little bit of space at the sides over here so the next thing that we're going to do are the tick marks so um, I'm going to grab a another primitive, a rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw out a rectangle like that. And what I want it to be is completely up to you if you want to design this yourself. Let's take a look at it. That looks like a pretty good large tick mark right there. Maybe we'll go just a little bit wider. And then what we'll do is with that selected, we'll select this one here, come up to the top, and we're going to align these vertically like that which it was that's interesting it was already aligned uh, <laughs> and perhaps the first thing we should do is the seconds instead yeah let's do the seconds instead so uh, let's take this and uh, hold control make it smaller this way and make it smaller this way like I think like that should be pretty good I don't know what do you think that looks pretty good and now we're just gonna take and move it up very close to the top let me zoom out so I can take a look and see if that looks about right that looks about right right there so we're gonna select this one hold shift drag over this one to select both of them come back up to the top so that we get it in the right alignment see how it moved and now we're ready to do our circular array so we want to align this one to this one. Order of operations is extremely important here or else you won't get this to work. So let's come down here to the circular array. And in here we've got 10 copies. That's not what we want. We need 60 minutes like that. So now we have 60 minutes. We want to make sure that you have it end at 360. 360 degrees you don't have to worry about anything else but 360 and 60 over here and of course start at zero if you have this option for 
group results. Go ahead and turn it on and say OK. And now we have all of our minutes as you see over there. One thing I did wrong on my clock is I only put I put it at 12, 3, 6, and 9 where it should have been uh, we should have gone every five minutes. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to take this one and, oops, I have to ungroup these. First we have to duplicate it. Then we can make the duplicate copy by holding control a little bit larger, a little bit longer, like that. And then we have to align it to this one. So we want to align this one, hold shift, to this one and we want to align it to the top like that right here the top so now you see it's aligned to the top now we need to make this every five seconds right so that should be 12 is that right <laughs> I don't know what it is my brain just doesn't work right anymore so let's see we got 5 10 uh, 15 20 25 so that's uh, 10, isn't it? I don't know. We'll figure it out in a minute. So <laughs> we want to align this one to this one. I'm getting over an illness, so give me a break here. And uh, we're going to come back to the circular array tool, except this time I think we're going to go 10. Does that look right? I know I got this wrong in the last one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No. It's going to be 12, I think, right? Like that. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so it's 12. Yeah, I should know that because everybody corrected me in the comments. <laughs> I'm going to say okay. So now we have the right type of clock, whereas over here I missed the five minute marks. And the only thing we have left to do here is just delete the. Uh, the ones that are in the middle there and I haven't figured out a way to do this without having to come back and delete these but uh, if any of y'all know how to do that let me know in the comments because I'd certainly like to know <laughs> but uh, I guess there is a way there is a way to do it somehow I don't know how so I'll just go around and delete all of these right now and then we will come back and finish our clock and if you zoom way in it makes this much easier to select them and there we go so now we have it right we have that right so now instead of dragging from right to left where it selects everything it touches we're going to drag from from left to right this time and this will only select everything that is inside this box so if I went this far, you'd see that these are not selected over here. See that? So dragging from left to right, you have to encompass the entire area that you want to group. So there we go. We've selected everything and we can now group that. So it looks like our clock is doing really well now. Oh, you know what? We didn't want to do that. Let's ungroup that because we wanted to put the... Um, the outer circle we need on a toolpath. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the outer circle on a toolpath and now we can come back and group it. Yeah, you get to see all these mistakes. Hey, you know what? You're gonna make them too. So <laughs> now we've got all of that grouped. What's next is we need to make this center cutout and that center cutout has to be um, a particular size but before we do that what we're going to do is take and uh, grab I don't know why I have I, I keep doing this wrong this one here and this one here we have to select so we have both of those selected we're going to do control on the letter D to duplicate it drag those two off and now we can go back and go back to work now this one becomes a cut layer because this one's going to go behind it. You following? So uh, this one the, is going to be painted red, the outside, the top, and this one is going to be painted white over here. There we have our clock and we have our face 
and I think I grouped these already. I didn't. Let's group those together. The next thing that we have to do is this little hole in the middle on one of them. And that's going to be um, this one where the clock face is. So this little hole, if you look up here, 7.899. Actually, I made it 7.9. And what I did was I measured the clock mechanism to make sure I had the, uh, the right size. So uh, you have to measure the shaft. So I'm going to grab a circle. I'm going to drag that out. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make this 7.9. Just like that. So now we have the right size cutout that's going to be on the clock face. Let's select it. And then hold shift. Select the red. And hit the bullseye. Like that. And now we can group those. So now we have the bottom layer. And actually I don't know if I regrouped these or not. I did not. So let's group that. And then let's grab them all and group them all together. Now if we take this layer and we put it on top of this layer by bullseyeing it like that. Those are our two layers and you want to make sure that you can't see the second layer. This is the important part. That means that you've got a perfect layer there. So let's go ahead and undo that. These two fit perfectly and we are ready and in business. Let's go ahead and put the text in. I happen to like great vibes for this type of text as you can see over here. If I select that you'll see great vibes up here. I'll put a link to that free font uh, in the description and in the show notes if you want to use that. If you don't want to use that then use whatever you want. Any font that you want. So I'm going to grab the text tool and I'm just going to put in here uh, the same thing I've got there. Loving sense. So there we go and uh, I believe I have to verify this, but I believe that Jose and Irma were married on 10, 17, 27, or maybe 10, 20. It may have been 10, 20, 2017. So uh, what I'll have to do is size this to the right size. And the way you do this is bring it up to about where you're going to want it. Select the other one right here. Come up to the top. We're going to align them. See how that moved? And we've got them aligned and now we can hold control and scale this to whatever size that we want. So let's say that we want it mm, probably about that size right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and group those because we want to align this one. It's selected to this one holding shift and grab the align tool again like that. Now it's perfectly aligned and we can put this one on the black layer like that. So now if we put the uh, black layer into fill we've got a beautiful clock like the one that I made and let me show you the difference over here. So let me get rid of this because this was the one that I made and what I do is I always put the uh, color of the layer in here. So we'll put white. I guess that's okay. Let's select it. Oh, here's something that, you know, I never really talk about. When you pull this down, you can't see it because it always goes to the last font that you used. But up at the top, way up at the top, you'll see favorites. Okay, and these are the fonts that I use the most. So I'm going to put this into uh, Arial like that. And now when I pull it down, it uh, doesn't matter if I went on to something else. You'd never see these, and I've been using these for a while. Uh, so you have favorites, you have recent, and you have all fonts. So if you want to add something to your favorites so you don't have to go searching everywhere, all you have to do is go to the font, right click on it, and click over here where it says add to favorites. That's all you have to do. So now in the future, when you go up at the top, if you go all the way to the top, you'll see favorites. Remember, you got to drag this up, otherwise you're not going to see this. And uh, you'll see that uh, all of my favorites are right here. And this is the one that uh, I think I just added. I just wanted to mention that because I don't think many people know about it because you can never see it. <laughs> you never see it. So, oh, there's the one I just added, Academy. Uh, you, whenever you pull this down, it's always going to be something like that. So all you have to do is click right here and drag to the top and you'll see your favorites that you've got here. 
So that's a good time-saving tip there. I hope that helps. And uh, I didn't want to put this into Academy. I wanted it in Arial, so I didn't want bold. Now I'm going to put that on a toolpath, and now I know that I should paint this board white. And I'm going to do that before I engrave them. And then this one over here, I'm just going to call this one um, red. So now I know for sure when I go and uh, cut these out that this is the white one, this is the red one, and this is all we need. Now, how do you get the names? Well, the names are completely separate. So let me take these out of here. The names are going to go on the red layer right here. So if I take this red one and dock it up in the top left corner, uh, I have my 12 inch by 12 inch toolpath right here that tells me this is the size of my wood. I have 300 by 300 wood. This fits perfectly at this size that I used onto that wood. So all I have to do now is come over here and type the two names, Jose, put it on the black layer, bring it over here, and then just use this arrow tool at the top to get it in the right, oh, actually what I need to do is bring it up here because we need to size it first, I'm sorry. So we need to make sure that it's gonna fit in here, and actually that does, but I'd like it to be just a little bit smaller. So I think that looks pretty good, like that. I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna press Control and the letter D, duplicate. I'm gonna use my arrow key to move it over here because I will now change the text by uh, selecting it, right clicking on it, and coming over here to edit text. I'm gonna click on that, I'm going to change this to Irma like that. And this edit text shape tool has uh, everything that you need inside here. So you can make it bold, italic, uppercase, distort, all kind. everything you need to do with text is in here. If your text is sideways or at a 45 degree angle, this makes it easier like that. Now it's in the exact same spot because I duplicated it. So if I turn it like this, I know that these two are going to be perfectly aligned. So the only thing that I have to look at here is the way the bottom looks. So the bottom doesn't look quite right on this one. That looks better. And then I'll look at this one and you'll see the bottom's not quite right. So I'll turn this one a little bit like that. And I think that looks better like that. And there we go. Jose and Irma and this is ready uh, almost ready to run so we're gonna select Irma we're gonna hold shift select Jose put them on the cut layer because we're just gonna cut these out and we're gonna bring them down here and uh, the only thing that we were doing up there was positioning them to get the size down so we can position them on the same piece of wood so that we cut these out of the same piece. So I'm just going to turn these so that they fit here and we don't waste any wood. There we go. So now we've got the uh, top layer and the two names on one piece of wood and then we'll come back and do the clock on a second piece of wood. And there is the complete design of this particular project. Simple, fast, now let me get rid of this was my original one that I was showing you earlier simple fast easy anyone can do this it only takes a couple minutes if I weren't showing you how to do it I could have done this in probably three minutes the entire design so just remember that with these names you want to make sure that you line these names up so that they fit nice up in here when you glue them to the top so all we're gonna do is cut all of this out we're going to cut and engrave this and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I did this. Now let's run out to the uh, spray room real quickly and I'll show you the paint that I use and how I sprayed this. And you're going to want to see this because um, I, I use some incredible cheap paint that is doesn't need primer, very easy to use. Let's go out there and see. So uh, this is my a little paint table <laughs> it's just a, a, a crappy old table and these are just uh, corner 
supports for a laser for shipping. I've got a bunch of those different kind of things and I'm going to be doing this uh, Baltic birch and this is the paint that I'm going to be using. So this is uh, graffiti paint and it's probably the cheapest paint on the market that you can find. And this is a burgundy color that I'm going to use for the red, as you can see there, burgundy. But it is a nice looking Valentine sort of red. The name of the company that makes this is Dang, and this is graffiti paint. And it's low volume, and it is it, it gives a really, really nice matte finish. This one is made by a company called Flame Orange. And this is the white that I'm going to be using. Again, a low pressure spray. And the beauty of these two paints is that they dry very, very quickly and they give a beautiful matte finish. So uh, that's why I use these. And they're also probably the cheapest paint on the market. If you buy them uh, $75 or more of the paint, you will get free shipping on it so um, and it comes out to be less than the big box stores i think these are like four dollars and 95 cents a can something like that um, very cheap when you buy in bulk and i always buy these in bulk so we're going to do the uh the red one first and you know i don't ever really show this process because uh, I, I find that everybody's going to do it different. So uh, I don't really see a need to do it, you know, to show how I do this. But some people have been asking for it. So uh, I'm going to show it today. So as with any spray paint, uh, first thing you need is a respirator. Okay. So uh, that's the first thing you need. And you need to... Uh, spray just a little bit first out of the uh, spray nozzle to make sure that it comes out nicely and with this this comes out very nicely this like I said this is a graffiti paint so uh, doesn't take very much to get a nice coat of paint on here and that is about it right there that's done and it is a beautiful finish so if you don't know it, uh, when you have a, a rattle can, when you're finished, turn the can over and that rattle blocks the paint from coming out and then just push the spray button until you hear a change in the sound. There you go. You heard that little pss. That means that all the paint is cleared from the nozzle. So this one is done. I'm going to repeat the process with the white on a different board. I don't need to show you that. And then when I'm finished, I just take a uh, 400 grit sandpaper and just go over it to make sure everything's nice. But you can see you get a really, really nice finish with the dang and the flame orange paints. Uh, comes out absolutely beautiful. Okay, so um, if you've stayed till the end, <laughs> you'll see that this is the finished product. Ready to go. I am going to actually give this to Jose today. Uh, he's coming over in a little while. And he will have a beautiful heart clock for his wife for Valentine's Day. I also did, by the way... Uh, I used a black paint marker on the edges so that the edges came out nice. I did do two coats of the uh, triple thick on the back so that it's nice and shiny, even though nobody's ever going to see it. Um, but this is the final, the final project, and he's getting it today. So if you stayed until the end today, uh, I've got a couple things. Number one, I'm going to make this file available for free. It's going to be right down there below the video. So you can uh, go ahead and make this. There's still plenty of time. I made this clock 
in, uh, I think, under four hours. So here is the trick on not only the Rust-Oleum Triple Thick, which is the product that I use because it has such a beautiful finish, but also any type of, uh, you know, lacquer or whatever you're going to finish the project with. Here is the tip that some of you have been waiting for. I... I want I needed to do this quickly to do this video and I'm not spending a whole lot of time in the shop lately because well I've been sick so um, I wanted to do it as quick as I could and I found out a little trick is to get a heat gun <laughs> and stay spray it with the lacquer or the triple thick or whatever your finish coat is going to be and use that heat gun from a distance of about two feet. So I just went right up on above it about two feet, went around in a circle like this, and after I put the heat gun on high, on high heat and high blower, and um, I, I guess it was about maybe three or four minutes that I went around in a circle. Don't get close to it because uh, all wood is going to have some sort of a moisture content in it. So if you get too close and you heat up the wood and not just the finish, um, I think, I, I don't know this for sure, but I'm just guessing that if you get too close, uh, the moisture is going to rise and you're going to wind up getting bubbles in the finish. So even though it's painted and everything else, so um, I didn't want to take that chance. I figured, you know, three or four minutes is great at, at about two feet. And I just went around in a circle and that's it. And, you know, uh, three or four minutes later, I was ready to spray the second coat and then the third coat and then the fourth coat. And I'm telling you that the Rust-Oleum tri Triple Thick is one of my favorite finishes but it may take days for every coat to dry. It's tacky for two, three days. And this really sped up the process. And now uh, it's just incredible. Uh, I'm leaving the heat gun next door. <laughs> so uh, any project that I have now, I even did it with the paint. That's where I started, where I got the idea. Even though I used the uh, Dang on this, and uh, the flaming orange, um, the flame orange. I still wanted it to dry more quickly because it was raining outside the day that I spray painted it. So, uh, and the shop next door is not HVAC controlled, the, the shed, I should say, <laughs> where I paint everything. So um, I used it on the paint and it dried in like 15 seconds. So um, yeah, great idea, use, a heat gun at a distance of about 24 inches and you're going to get great results in a very fast time and no more waiting for hours like with lacquer or no waiting at all three four minutes you're on to the next coat another three four minutes you're on to the next coat um, so that's tip number one uh, number two is that you'll get this file for free so there you go below the video is going to be a direct link you can download this file for free. I'm going to put this in a zip package uh, of light burn files. And depending on the laser that you're using, you know, if you're using an Ortur, you're going to use the file that says um, bottom left origin. If you're using an X tool, you're going to use the file that says top left origin. If you're using a CO2 laser, your origin may be the top right. So all three files are going to be in that zip package along with the uh, SVG. So um, anybody will be able to do this project on any laser. So uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, even though I'm only in the shop a couple of hours while I'm recuperating from my holiday nightmare a series of illnesses, um, I still get to come out here for a couple hours at a time and make a video or two. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. And as always, 
I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.